Oh, it's a giant. 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 Come on, come here. Come here. Oh. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about one of the best fall bass fishing baits of all time and one of my favorites as well. I catch a ton of big bass on it every fall and that is going to be the spinner bait. While it works really really well just using it in general, there's three fall spinner bait bass fishing tips I'm going to offer you in today's episode that is going to help you catch more fish every fall. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of today's episode so you can start catching more fish on a spinner bait every fall and some bigger ones as well. Let's hop up on the trolling motor and we'll start talking about tip number one. So my first tip when it comes to fishing a spinnerbait in the fall is going to be target high percentage areas. While this is a great search bait and you can cover a ton of water with a spinnerbait just casting it out there and burning it in and covering a ton of water in the fall, I find that I catch a lot more fish when I target certain areas where I know the fish are going to be. So what does that look like in the fall? In the early fall, these fish are going to get up in the creeks. They're going to chase the bait back where they're getting to that cooler water when the lake starts to turn over and the cooler water is actually up shallower. And then as we get into the later fall, what we're going to be looking for is deeper banks with wood. That's actually what I'm targeting right now. So as fall progresses, what these fish are gonna do is start to push their way back out to the main lake where they came from, but they're still gonna wanna eat on the way out because they're trying to get as fat as they possibly can before winter comes along and their metabolism truly slows down. I will look specifically for those pieces of wood on the bank and I'll throw my bait right next to them and reel it right down that piece of wood or whatever they might be laying on and that's a high percentage area Area where there's likely going to be a bass. If you fish enough of them in a day, you will catch fish because there will be bass on those pieces of wood staging up waiting to get back out there for the winter. So what if your lake doesn't have wood? What are the other types of cover that these fish will get on as the fall progresses? So if you have grass that grows in your lake, the grass will actually start to die off, which means there'll be more isolated clumps of grass where these fish are gonna have to live. So a high percentage area in a grass lake would look like finding a isolated clump of grass where the rest of the grass has died off and those fish have to move into the only remaining grass. If you live on a lake where they pull the docks out in the wintertime, if you have, say, 100 docks in the lake in the summertime, they pull 75% of them out. Now there's only 25 docks. High percentage areas would be the only docks remaining left in the lake because those fish have to go somewhere and live. That's not to say that it'll only be one thing on each lake. It'll be a mixture of everything. Some lakes have all three. Some lakes only have two. Some lakes only have one. It just depends on what type of cover you have in your lake. Essentially, in the fall, the cover will start to shrink, whether those docks getting taken out of the lake or the grass is dying off, something like that. And then your high percentage areas will become much more obvious once you only have a few pieces of cover remaining. And that's most likely where the bass are going to be. There's one. That's a nice one. There we go. Now that'll transition us into tip number two because I was doing what tip number two is right there and that's how I caught that fish. So. There's a nice one on the spinnerbait. We're gonna go ahead and throw her back and let's talk about tip number two. So tip number two is going to be to fish slow, fast. And I know what you're thinking. That probably doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Let's get to fishing and I'll explain it. So when you're fishing slow, fast, the tendency with the spinnerbait, because it is a search bait, is that people want to fish it really, really fast. They want to crank it hard. They want to crank it fast and cover a bunch of water. And that's great. That's what the spinnerbait is meant for. But in the fall, when you're fishing these high percentage areas where there's only a few places left that these fish are going to be, you don't need to cover a ton of water. You still want to cover some water, but not a ton of water. And that's where fishing slow, fast comes into play. What you're going to do instead of throwing your spinnerbait out there and burning it back to the boat is when you throw your spinnerbait out, especially the colder the water gets, is I'm going to crank my spinnerbait as slow as I can just to keep those blades turning. It's gonna crawl through the limbs on the tree or right down the side of the dock really, really slowly or barely tick the tops of the grass that's left down there that we were just talking about on these high percentage areas. And that's how I'm gonna fish my spinnerbait to get more bites. While you'll still get bites if you fish your spinnerbait fast, just because of the nature of the bait, it looks like a school of shad and it's gonna trigger these bass to bite. By fishing this spinnerbait really, really slow and just keeping the blades turning, you'll keep your bait in the strike zone much longer and it almost causes that bait just to like hover in place right where these fish are. And because they're in high percentage areas and that's what you're targeting, 
you want your bait to stay in the strike zone very, very long. You're not necessarily searching for fish in a big way where you're gonna cover a ton of water with a spinner bait. You don't need to do that in the fall. So I turn my handle a little bit slower and I think it helps me get a few more bites just because it stays in that fish's face just a little bit longer and really gives them a chance to think about biting that bait. Now, if you're fishing in clear water, you might wanna fish it a little bit faster, but most of the times there's a lot of rain in the fall and it'll dirty up the water. And because of that, you want your bait to stay in the strike zone a little bit longer so these fish have a chance to actually see the bait and bite it before it gets out of their strike zone. And tip number three when it comes to fishing a spinnerbait is probably one of the most important to trigger as many bites as possible while you're fishing a spinnerbait is to make your spinnerbait do something different. That is gonna be the key to triggering a lot of these bites, especially when you're fishing in a high percentage area already and you're just hovering that bait in that fish's face. You wanna make your bait do something different than just a straight slow retrieve down the log or dock or whatever you're fishing. While it will work and you will catch fish doing it, making your spinnerbait do just something a little bit different will often get you a few more bites throughout the course of the day. A couple of the things that I like to do are like a rod twitch. I'll kind of give it a little twitch, one twitch, a double twitch, something like that. All that will do is make those blades like flare a little bit. A couple other things you can do with your spinner bait to make it do something different is reel your bait and then just stop the reel for one second or flare the reel handle and get it to like flare those blades that way as well. Those are all things that you can manually do with your spinner bait to make it do something different. A couple other things that make your spinner bait do something different that you don't do personally is throw it down the side of a lay down and it'll have logs sticking off the sides. When you get to a log, reel it up to the log slowly and then pop it off the end and let it sink back down a little bit. When you like bump it off the wood and make it make contact with the cover that you're fishing, you can do that with a dock as well. Reeling it down the side of the dock, you can bump it into dock posts or stuff like that. If you're fishing grass and you get it stuck in the grass, you can rip it free from the grass and when it breaks free, a lot of times the fish will just react to it. And even if they're not looking for a meal or not hungry or in the mood to feed, you can still catch fish that way just because you're making them react to your bait while it's in their face. This is, there we go. That feels like a good one too. Oh my, he's not that big. He's decent. Buddy needed some food. Wow. You're blind in one eye. That's what a spinnerbait will get you in the fall time. There's a nice one right there. Very skinny, which is weird for fall. I mean, this fish is probably sick or something because he's blind in one eye and all beat up. But I'm not going to lie. I'm very thankful for this fish because it has been a struggle today. Same thing there. I threw it up on the bank bounced it off a piece of wood, and as soon as it came off a piece of wood, he grabbed it. So contact with cover is gonna get you more bites just like this. Let's throw him back and see if we can bounce it off a couple more pieces of wood coming up here. Maybe catch one even bigger than him. We're gonna go ahead and let Buddy go here. See ya. Oh, it's a giant, it's a giant. It's a giant, it's a giant, it's a giant. Come on. Oh, I knew there had to be a big one in there. I knew it. Oh my gosh. That's a giant for this lake. Come here, come here. Oh. <laughs> oh, barely hooked. Let's give her a nice slow-mo release. We are gonna let this beautiful fish go for someone else to catch her another day. That was fun. I knew there had to be a big one up there in those, between those logs. I'll show you what it looks like. There she goes. I knew there had to be a big one up in between those logs. It looked perfect. All this is is a steep bank like we were talking about, key area two logs right in between each other as you can see here they look perfectly lined up giant logs nice cover for those fish to get tucked up underneath you can see i pitched my spinnerbait right up into between the two of them and when i did i just slow rolled it out i felt it hit a piece of wood i popped it free and she destroyed it and then the fight was on and i mean that is what it's all about for fall spinnerbait fishing those fish are trying to feed up on shad that's all they want to do get a bunch of shad in their belly to survive winter that looked like a big school of shad coming through and she ate it. 
like I said, I put all three of those tips to work right there. Caught a five and a half pounder on a lake that usually doesn't produce fish like that. There we go. That might be the one from earlier. I think that's the one that ate my leaf earlier. It's another big one. Again, I was doing the same thing. Fishing that steep bank, there's a piece of wood right there. I threw my spinnerbait up there, I bounced it off the wood, and he ate it when I was just reeling it real slow like that. Right down the mouth, like I said, modify your spinnerbait, you'll land a ton more fish just like today. If you want to see how to do that, I'll link the video right here and you can go check that one out. It'll also be in my description below. It's another three and a half pounder. We're going to go ahead and let her go. See you, girl. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking all about little spinnerbait tips that can help you catch a lot more bass while you're out there this fall. If you put them all in conjunction together, fishing those high percentage areas, reeling your bait really slowly through those high percentage areas, and then either making it make contact or make your bait do something different while it's down there, I promise those three combined will help you catch a ton more fish while you're out there in the water and you'll have a much more fun fall catching some big largemouth or even smallmouth or spotted bass. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and if if you'd like to see any more fishing tips, leave a comment down below and thanks for watching.